Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home. I'm Claudia Puy. Before we're joined by our guest today, I want to let you know that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on donations and free educational programs to SAG After artists. The conversation is made possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters. Over the past year, the foundation has given nearly 7 million in COVID relief to more than 7,000 performers. If you're a SAG after artist and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video and thank you for your support. And I am so fortunate to be here today with Together Together, director writer Nicole Beckwith and stars Patty Harrison and Ed Helms. Hi everyone. Hi. Hello. I really enjoyed your film. It was just uh, a pleasure to, it's just rare that we see movies like this and this is fresh and funny and it's an authentic story. Um, let's start with the basics, Nicole. How did you come up with the story? I don't know, I'm just, just like that. I'm just very creative. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I just, you know, I was thinking about the type of movie I wanted to see and the type of story that I, I needed in my heart, um, you know, about a man who wants to be a father instead of being dragged into it um, by some demanding woman. And um, the story of a woman going through a pregnancy whose like total identity isn't eclipsed by that. Um, it doesn't derail her hopes and dreams. And we end up seeing so many stories about women and their midlife crises. And, you know, just it's, it's become, their biological clock, not midlife crisis, biological clock. Um, but obviously there's a male biological clock too. And feminism means allowing men to be more than the stereotype as well. I, I love the way that you flip that notion of the biological clock. Um, what prompted that? Um, well, like you said, I mean, I do think a big part of feminist filmmaking is like not just changing like female representation on camera, but also male representation. Like you can't have one without the other. Um, and yeah, I'm really sick of the like female biological clock being this huge to do um, that runs our whole lives and everything we want. And then we never um, we never let men want to be fathers. We never get to see that. I think that does like a huge disservice to everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, that was I was fed up. That's <laughs> this is That's really a protest funny. film, no? Yeah, it's a protest. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, Ed, speaking of, uh, you are a recent father, and then you also have a three-year-old. So did this really, did the role of Matt resonate for you? Or how did you, what what, what drew you to it? Uh, yeah, 100%. I, I, uh, I think what drew me to it more than any connection to the character, which which I do have, and I'm, I'll tell you about that, but I, I just loved the script. I loved the story, the tone, the uh, simplicity, the elegance of it, and also the the kindness and benevolence of this script. It's just, it, sadly, that's kind of rare, especially in the comedy space where, um, where you know, the quickest kind of put downs seem to be the 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 most popular scripts and projects out there but um but this one just had a uh like i said a kindness to it that i and a warmth that i just loved and i wanted to instantly be a part of it i met with nicole and i and just fell in creative love with nicole pretty quickly and just felt like the right thing to do as for the character matt yes uh i'm I'm a dad and I, uh, I sort of came at it a little bit later than average, I think. And, uh, and I always wanted to be a dad. I, 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 it's funny cause as a creative person, I was sort of pursuing a lifestyle that, that is not compatible with fatherhood or family life. And yet I still had this like deep desire for it and expectation of myself to to be that at some point. And, um, and eventually I just had to start making different choices and uh, kind of making some, I don't know, course corrections in my own life, uh, which I, I'm so grateful that I have, I have two incredible kids. 
most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Patty, I, you know, I loved your character. I thought she was so much, I just appreciated also the idea of a friendship between a 26 year old and a, what was he, 45 year old, mid, mid forties. Um, a, a true friendship. And I love that it didn't end up a romance. Um, I was sort of dreading that when I was watching and going, please don't go that route, just do something different. And you did, of course. Um, what drew you to, to the character of Anna? Um, well, I, I think that's kind of this, the same thing that I felt, like the dread that I felt when I initially read the script. Um, <laughs> I think it really, uh, it was really exciting to get to read it kind of in real time and have all of these expectations uh, you know, building and all this dread building. And then those, uh, those themes get addressed pretty head on, uh, in the movie. And the Anna as like a character is a very real person in the script. She comes off as like very grounded. It was so, so far away from anything that I, um, I thought I'd ever like play if in acting, like uh, I think just as a comedian, uh, you kind of like stumble into acting a lot. People assume like if you're doing stand up, they're like, oh, you probably want to write and you probably want to act and whatever. And you know, I, it's like, I've had those dreams for sure. Like you, you fantasize about that stuff, I think. But um, I just always assumed I would be, you know, playing, uh, hamming it up, playing lots of uh, characters that are like, really gotta go to the bathroom, they have diarrhea or whatever. Like that's kind of my wheelhouse, is like people who really have to diarrhea. Uh, and so <laughs> it was an opportunity to play something more grounded that had a lot of heart to it and was still funny, but I think there was, um, there was a lot of uh, restraint. And, and I think, you know, when I met Nicole, that kind of like sealed it for me because it, you really like see where all this like warmth and, and humor like emanates from this beautiful person. <laughs> I want to get back to all that warmth and humor in a second, but I also really wanted to ask you both, Ed and Patty, about your chemistry, because it was great. There was a real sense of a bond there. You know, we watched it sort of the progression of your friendship and, and um, I believe, believed their rapport. Um, so did you spend time together beforehand or how do you achieve or during or how do you achieve that that level of chemistry? Patty and I went on a two month backpacking trip. We did the entire Appalachian Trail together and um, I got really hurt. Yeah, there was <laughs> <laughs> I fell down I fell down a 250 uh, 250 foot rock fit cliff. There was a a helicopter rescue. It was a whole thing. None of this is true. Uh, <laughs> but um, you're so but I think it... <laughs> I'm like, I've but... never read about this. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think I, I credit Nicole with being the sort of like <laughs> casting wizard here. Um, I didn't know Patty before this. We had a couple of meetups over coffee with Nicole and uh, and I think Nicole just vibed something in the two of us that uh, that would work. And then she played matchmaker in, in a very kind of like restrained way. And um, I just had a ton of fun with Patty. Yeah, I think. I think, you know, they're probably both um, uh, sick of me saying, telling the story, but I think, you know, we, uh, Ed, I met Ed like for coffee with Nicole and then we had like some read throughs of the script together, which were nice, but we didn't get to spend like an extensive amount of time together before we started shooting. And I felt like that was really helpful kind of or conducive to what was happening because for the most part, the script is like in chronological order of them like tracking their relationship. So like them meeting in the script was kind of me like meeting Ed 
And then as we spent more time together filming, I think in the script, the closeness is growing, the, the bond is kind of forming. And that's what it really felt like, I think, um, day to day, because it was like, I was learning more about Ed as we filmed. I was learning that he has to have 30 bottles of Fiji water in his trailer, um, or he starts like creating, he starts sending little traps on set for people. Like he'll like light people on fire with a little lighter. Um, Filtered Fiji water. Like it, it, yeah. water, it has to be run through in a secondary filter and then rebottled. Has it actually yeah. come from Fiji? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was most of our budget. That was <laughs> most of the budget. Yeah. Thousands and of that's thousands. just for washing my hair, by the way. That's just <laughs> yeah. for washing my hair. <laughs> um, no, it was, it felt really like, it felt really cool to be tracking this weird parallel relationship in my, in real life with um, getting to know Ed and then it happening as we're like finishing the movie. It was like this very emotionally, it was a crescendo in like two different ways, I guess. I love that. Um, Nicole, your background is in theater and I can see with how developed and dimensional the characters are, how honest your dialogue feels. How do you think that that has influenced and um, informed this movie? Um, well, uh, I see oh, that a lot can happen just in a room with two people. Um, so I think, um, I think that is a huge influence. I love just talking the way people actually get to know each other. Um, and one thing I really love about film is that you can have two people in a room talking, but you can be really with them and you can have a more intimate um, window into what's going on. So I really love that. I love the close up. Um, so it's really a mix. It's like, um, I know that a lot can happen just with two people talking in a room and, and then you get the camera up there and you get to see every little, you know, eye movement and breath, every hesitation. Um, and I think that's just really valuable. You had a lot of people with backgrounds in comedy and improv. Did, did, was there a fair amount of improvisation on set or was it pretty, uh, did it hew pretty closely to the script? I'm a real, I hate comedy. I hate improv. No, um, uh, there are some beautiful uh, improvised moments, actually. Like you wouldn't necessarily um, think like, oh, that was an improv moment because it's not like wacky. Um, but like there's a beautiful, like we switched lines. Like Ed had the idea to, to switch some of Anna and Matt's lines ahead of the baby shower in this like really sweet, um, intimate, very charged moment that was beautiful and then there's like some funny improvs obviously that that were happening all the time but we also shot the bulk of the movie in 17 days so I would be like that's hilarious stop <laughs> we have we have two more hours to shoot five scenes um so uh but there's some really great stuff that that made it in in the in the therapy scenes and um just a lot of oh, the coffee shop um so I don't know. I mean, I think Ed and Patty would be, uh, you'd have a better recollection of that. and what. That I mean, was. There, there really is. There's a whole other movie. There's a whole <laughs> other cut of the movie. It's way nastier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Patty and I were, have, were doing our own thing most of the time. And then we would just do like takes for Nicole. And it turns out those are the ones she used. So, <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I will say I, I come from an improv background, I know, and Patty does too, and I love to improvise. I also, I've now this far into my career, I, I used to really put a lot of emphasis on improv because it was like, that's me, that's what I'm adding to the process. But now I've just, I don't know if it's a, a little bit of maturity, I don't think anyone would, would accuse me of being very mature, but I do now have so much more appreciation for great scripts and great written word and so when i am handed a script like nicole's that i love and i love the words then i kind of am excited to honor that with like a more kind of traditional execution and um and and rehearsal and practice and memorization in a way that is a little bit of a different approach than my old kind of falling back on improv and I love it. I'm, I, 
And, and, and what was so great about this process with Nicole and Patty was that there was still room for improvisation here and there and, and messing around. And we did. And certainly Julio Torres is like, <laughs> it's like a feral animal in an improv situation. Like you cannot, <laughs> you have no idea where he's going to go. And he's just the greatest like little Tasmanian devil of, of comedy um, spinning around and bumping into everything. I love it. <laughs> he was great. There were so many great little small parts like that. And I love the diversity of it all. Um, speaking of, of uh, loving the words, there was, there were so many great lines I wrote some down. Sometimes people just connect. It's not about being attracted to one another. I thought that was great. And um, when uh, Patty's character asks about your college friends, um, and Matt says, at this point, they're all either settled down or desperately clinging to the corpse of their youth. I thought that was really great. And then the whole Woody Allen thing, the Manhattan thing, I was really happy to hear that in there. Um, so I wondered if you guys had any favorite lines like that. Patty and Ed. I love that you remembered really specific lines like that. I had a friend um, call me after she saw it and, uh, and she was quoting lines to me also. And so much so that, um, that she asked me, she was like, do you have the script? Cause I can't remember this line exactly. And I let just, it's like, rattling around in my head and will you will you just send that line to me and i i dug up the script and i sent it to her and it was the one about because i just pulled it up this text exchange on my phone uh uh hanging out with my settled friends makes me sad for what i want and don't have and hanging out with my single friends makes me sad about what i have and don't want so i'm just kind of marooned and that I think it's just such, that's like Nicole's finger on the pulse. Like every everybody feels that way at some point, and it's a uh, it's a be it's a beautiful expression of a universal sentiment. And um, and yeah, my friend just called me and like I got to know that word for word. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking that when I heard it too, I was like, oh yeah, that was it. Just really like jumped out. Um, how about you, Patty? Were there certain things? that really spoke to you? Um, well, I, I really, you know, as beautiful as the movie is, I wish I had like a really sophisticated nuanced quote from it to pull from, but I think the quote that like resonated, <laughs> resonates with me the most is uh, when uh, Jules in the coffee shop, when Julio Torres is like talking about having an app that, He's like, I have an app that tracks your periods. And Anna's like, why do you have an app that tracks your periods? And he's like, no, an app that tracks your period. And it like <laughs> glance and then like that comes up and it's like, it's not addressed. That uh, it hits me and it makes me giggle. <laughs> so, like, Can I quote another? A universe happening that's like yeah. subtextual in this movie about like what's going on with Jules that like, he has an app that tracks Anna's period. <laughs> Can I tell can I say an another Julio quote that he improvised that is like also one of my favorites of the movie? Um, it, I think the line, uh, Patty says something like, uh, oh, she's trying to pretend like she doesn't know me. And she's like, oh, yeah, he brought these clogs in. Uh, he's trying to return them. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, this isn't a shoe store. It's a coffee shop or something like that. And Julio goes, well, do you have a receipt? <laughs> Like I can return these clogs at a coffee shop. I don't know. That was an improv line. That was really funny. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. I, and I love that, uh, Nicole, when Matt says, I did write this down, I just need to move forward. And it just so happens that I'm doing it by myself. Uh, people think I'm giving something up to do this, but I don't feel that way at all. I'm just pursuing something that I care about. Because I feel like it was, it didn't make, single people look sad or hopeless or you know they they seemed hopeful or he says that it's weird to be perceived as hopeless when actually i'm incredibly hopeful i think like culturally we're really obsessed with like being partnered and like being single is a dirty word or something and i think that that's um really bad and 
I think that um, putting romantic love about, above all else, and it's really just such a small shade of the spectrum of love that we experience in our lives. And, um, and you don't need someone else to become a full person. You don't need someone else to realize your life the way that you want to realize it. And sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, but it doesn't hinge on that. And I think it creates um, like a stigma around um, independence and solitude and loneliness. And, and I don't think those things need to be um, a stigma. Right. And being alone is not necessarily being lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And I love that it didn't go the way conventional rom-coms do you know i just like either they would p pair up or they would each find people to pair up with or you know some of those more predictable things um was yeah. that was important to you from the get-go oh yeah i would never want to tell a story where two people end up together i mean i think um I think uh, some of the greatest loves of my life have been friendships um, and falling in love with those people um, have been just as, you know, massive and impactful and resonant in my life um, as anything else, sometimes more so. Uh, ratio wise, I've fallen in friend love a lot more than I've fallen in romantic love. Um, and, um, and I also think like, you know, uh, we, but scowl at the idea of like impermanence. Like, I think we like forever, happily ever after forever and ever um, has become like a, that success and like an impermanent relationship is like a failure somehow. Like we never really celebrate impermanent relationships, but they can be just as important to you as a person and the direction your life takes and um, changes that last for the rest of yourself, um, whether or not that relationship is like an active um, participant in your day-to-day -day life. And, and I think that that's also important. Like there doesn't have to be sorrow in, in letting go of someone or something. Um, you, it can still be cherished and thought of positively. It doesn't have to be thought of as a loss. Things like, um, things like that happen all the time and it's not a loss. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've heard you described as an actor's director because um, you really do have this nuanced understanding of bringing this a character to life. Um, what is it that you enjoy about working this closely with actors? Oh, actors are my favorite. I mean, coming from the theater, that's the that's the like major um, influence in the filmmaking. It's like that's. Uh, you know, you write something and you're writing it by yourself and, you know, I, I'm thinking about things and, you know, I know these characters really well, but it's really exciting because they're not alive until, you know, actors get their hands on them. And then, you know, you're nothing without an actor. So it's like, um, I just think that it's such a emotions and just the toolbox. It's so similar to writing, but it's so much more, um, it's so vulnerable to be an actor. It's so intense to put yourself out there creatively in such, um, in such an open and intimate way. And I just feel so privileged to be able to um, enter that process and share in that process with, with anyone. And, and, uh, everyone's process is a little different. What every actor needs or looks for is different. And so I think that's also, um, thrilling to me. I don't know. I mean, yeah. 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 That makes sense. And, and on the flip side for Patty and, and Ed, um, how is it for you to be directed by somebody like Nicole? <laughs> Not somebody like Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> um, I think it was like the best possible experience I could have had as like, especially as like my first like movie movie. Like, um, I mean, I've, I've like had small parts in other movies and, but that is like a completely different experience because you like pop in for a day, you're on set for like a couple of hours, you're kind of like out of the way. Um, <clears throat> so this was like, I had no idea really kind of uh, what to expect about it and what kind of was expected of me, which was like terrifying because I, I just like really wanted to be like in service of 
uh, Nicole's mission with like what she wanted to make with this movie and like having Ed was like great too, because he's like a pro. So it was, it was nice to have that stability there. But I think Nicole really like made, she like facilitated this whole kind of support system where it really felt like easy to ask a question, like easy to uh, like make, to bring up like any sort of like thoughts I had or if I was apprehensive about something or I didn't understand something. I've definitely been in situations in the past where I've worked with directors who I don't feel comfortable doing that with because I'm like, they're going to get pissed. They're like, you know, because it's like productions are so, it's like everything's moving. Everyone's like, it's like, do your job. There's like, sometimes there's this vibe of like, know exactly what you're doing and do it right the first time. Um, and I just, I don't, I think, uh, I don't, flourish in that atmosphere and uh nicole was kind of like the exact exact opposite of it it was like she was the exact opposite of it she was uh always like accessible always like checking in really like everything was fun even the days that were like we were shooting like really stressful or emotional scenes it was still fun because she's just like there and she's like smiling and like poking you or whatever the weird <laughs> shit she does <laughs> poking you <laughs> little give me wedgie give me swirly like hey, don't get too in your head and then she was give me swirly in the toilet no it was like like a, a dream come true like best possible version of, of that experience i i'll just i i'll echo that i also think I'll echo all of that. I completely agree with everything Patty just said, um, especially the part about me being a pro. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I um, it, it it was it was it did feel kind of like a perfect little cocoon to be in because the material was wonderful. My castmate, my all my castmates were wonderful and enthusiastic about the material. And then, of course, the leadership in Nicole uh, was incredibly, uh, uh, as Patty was saying, sort of benevolent from a creative standpoint. But I want to, I want to mention something that doesn't come up in interviews very often, which is um, Nicole as a director interfacing with the crew on this movie really was a special thing to watch because. I've worked on so many sets, so many different kinds of directors, so many different kinds of crews and dynamics between them. This walking onto set every day just was, there was a quietness to this set because everyone was comfortable and everyone sort of understood. I think there was just really good communication and, uh, and I think everyone was proud to be working for Nicole and uh, we just had, you know, what, what people see on screen is the cast, but what you're really seeing is the lighting and you're seeing the photography and you're seeing all these things that all these incredibly talented and dedicated people are pitching into the process and, um, and how that, you know, that, how that entire dynamic, it's really like this whole organism and the director's the head and, uh, it's, it's oftentimes like Patty was saying, it's a little bit of like kind of whip cracking going on and like, do your job, make it, just do it great. Don't ask questions, but there is another way to do it. And that's the Nicole way to do it, which is like, Hey everybody, let's get together and nail this. Let me know if you have questions, I'm here for you. And it just makes the whole space, the whole creative space that you're in really special and um, and on a really small movie like this, showing up to set every day, it's very liberating creatively and incredibly fun. On behalf of the SAG After Foundation, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences, wisdom, process, and craft with your fellow performers. Thank you. Thanks a so pleasure. Much. Thanks for having us.